Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to dialect. If you've been watching my videos recently you'll know that last week I took a quiz testing uh, how close to an American dialect I am and in particular which American dialect I was closest to. And so I thought well that's interesting but you know since moving to the United States what about my own dialect, my British dialect I should say or even my English dialect? How much has that changed? How much has it evolved away from what I'd always known growing up. And so it turns out there is another dialect quiz that pinpoints your British dialect. And so I'm going to take that here in just a second to see if my British dialect, the one with which I grew up, has changed dramatically or has just stayed the same. Let's get going. All right, we are underway and the first question that comes up is asking you where you were raised. Were you raised in Ireland or the UK? Or alternatively, were you not raised there but would like to play anyway? So even if you're not British born or raised or Irish born or raised, you can play this game and maybe, just maybe, it will help to determine how close to a British or Irish dialect yours is. So without further ado, let us let me get underway. And of course, I was raised in Ireland or the UK. Um, uh, very specifically the UK and even more specifically England and even more specifically than that the town of Grimsby in northeast Lincolnshire so I will click that and the first question that comes up today what do you call the small grey bug oh that's the same question that came up on the American one the other week what do you call the small grey bug that curls up into a ball when it's touched and on that American one I didn't have an answer because I didn't recognize any of the terms um, so let's see what comes up here then so you got pea bug never heard of that roly-poly that was one of the options cheese log grub Cheesy Bug, Billy Baker, no, uh, Chucky Pig, Slater, uh, Centipede, Centipede, well we have centipedes, but that's not what I imagine when I think of a small grey bug, Pill Bug, Fat Pig, Woodlouse, Woodlouse, we absolutely have Woodlice in, in Grimsby, or I did growing up, I would call that, if I saw that on this desk right now, A, I'd be horrified, and B, I'd refer to it as a woodlouse instantly. So good, well, we've, we've solved that mystery then, haven't we? Uh, which of these words, if any, would you use for a young person characterized by brash, loutish behavior and often low social status? Now, you'll see that by default, my cursor is over the word townie. That's very interesting because I did grow up using that term, or I should say hearing it. I didn't go about my, my day referring to people as townie. But also chav, and I think chav is one that to this day I would, I would still Still use, and I think that's entered my my dialect. Not because of living in America, obviously that word is almost unknown here. I would suggest, but just because it emerged in the 2000s as an alternative to all of the ones you see here. So I would say. I would say chav. I think that's that's part of my present day dialogue. And I think, as I said before, that's going to be important for this test as we move forward. So let's do that. Okay, brilliant. How do you pronounce the words full and fool? Well, there's two different words. So no, they don't sound the same. In fact, they sound different. Okay. So who would do that? I suppose the Scots? Is that, that's yes, again, what I did just there, most of England does that and Ireland, but not Scotland. Um, how do you pronounce the words door and poor? Precisely like that. They rhyme, as it says right here, so that's good. Um, there will be parts of, of the United Kingdom that would say, I don't know, doer and poor. Poor, well, that's the same, isn't it? It's got, we'll find out, we'll click the link, so they rhyme. And, and that's that's the case for much of Lower England, including where I'm from. Okay, next one, this is the huge debate in England, has been for years, ever since I was a child. How do you pronounce scone? And as you heard just there, I do it to rhyme with the word bone. But many people in England will say, scone to rhyme with gone. That is a huge debate in England. It's not one that, uh, to which I partake usually or in which I partake uh, because I have no problem with either pronunciation. You know, they both make sense if you if you see the other precedents. Words like gone, like bone. You know, we can have that debate in the comments. Please do. For me, it, it rhymes with bone. That's weird. It looks like I'm sort of in the minority with that looking at the map. Um, although most of Ireland uh, apparently says scone. What do you call the evening meal? Now, this is perhaps where my dialect uh, has changed a little bit because I'm not gonna usually refer to it as tea anymore or tea time. I mind when I'm sort of referring to that usage, but I'm almost always say dinner now. I can't decide if that's an American thing. I don't think it is. I think even when I lived in London, I was saying dinner instead of tea. Um, so I'm gonna go with dinner on that one and that could actually move me away from the North when we get the results in, but we will see. Which of these words, if any, would you use for a heavy rainfall 
Uh, raining cats and dogs, pouring, eh, bucketing it down, tipping down, pelting down, throwing it down, lashing, chucking it down. I say that all the time, chucking it down or pissing it down. Uh, I do occasionally say that, but chucking it down out there is definitely something um, that I say quite often. You have to in England. It's specifically uh, prevalent in the kind of Midlands, East Midlands area. Very interesting, once again, given my upbringing. Okay, uh, question number eight. How do you pronounce the words horse and horse? Well, they're the same again. Uh, I didn't know there were any differences, actually, on, on how to pronounce those. So they sound exactly the same, and that's the case for much of England. Once again, you'll see there that it's uh, Scotland, really, that's in disagreement there um, over that pronunciation. So much of the Scots, much of the Irish um, have two different pronunciations for those two words. How do you pronounce the A in last? Uh, does it sound like the A in cat? It does for me. Or does it sound like the A in father, um, as in last? No, because I'm not from the south. Um, so it is indeed the A as in cat. Yes, it is. It's mostly the north of England and parts of Ireland that uh, strongly pronounce it that way. Uh, what do you call it when a person gets a ride on the back of someone else's bicycle? I call it a pag. I remember when I went to university and I, I used this term to one of my friends he had no idea what I was talking about. He was from Huddersfield, which for anybody that doesn't know, is in Yorkshire, which is not, you know, insanely far away from where I grew up. So it changes all over. And as you can see from here, there's an absolute plethora of options at our disposal. I've heard of Backy, I've heard of Cita, Tan, Dubby. Oh, Pag's down here. There's Pag. Yes. Oh, look at that. That's where I was raised. That's the sort of Grimsby area. It is absolutely local only to my hometown. It's still there, still part of my dialect. I wouldn't, put it this way, I wouldn't use any of those other terms. How do you pronounce the words food and good? Uh, they they don't rhyme. Uh, they certainly don't rhyme, but they, they do for some people. Food and good. Yes, yeah, Scottish people probably again. Yep, absolutely. Look at England. Beneath Hadrian's Wall, we all, um, you know, pronounce those words with different sounds. In Scotland and and Northern Ireland, they, they don't. Which of these words words, if any, would you use for a baby? A ween, a baba, a ben, a little one, a babby, a wean, a babe, a bab, a kid, a sprog, a nipper. I've used a couple of those, actually, uh, in recent times. Um, I often say wee little nipper, but I'm usually being ironic because I'm not Scottish. So that wouldn't really genuinely fall in, into my dialect. I suppose out of all of these, little one would be the closest. I, I tend to use that. And in my family, I was always referred to as, as little and uh, abbreviating it just because I was the youngest. So I'm going to go with little one because I have said that of my nieces. Little one is found more or less everywhere, but more strongly in the south of England. Which of these words, if any, would you use for feeling cold? Baltic, nippy, chilly, parky, nesh. Not heard of that one. Brass monkeys, uh, foundered, perishing, freezing, nithered or arctic. Feeling a bit nippy. It's a bit nippy out, isn't it? I have said that even in the US and even in Chicago. You have to in Chicago, especially at this time of year. Although, ironically, it's um, quite mild right now. Looks like much of England uses the word nippy. Uh, which of these words, if any, would you use for a child's soft shoes worn for PE? This also came up in the American dialect quiz. If you recall, if you've seen that quiz, I wanted to say plimsoll, but it wasn't one of the options. It is today. I do see it there. And out of all of these, that's the one I choose. However, you know, I think the language of, of school and sports may have changed since I was at school, but that is the word that I used at school, and those are the shoes that I wore. So, slim soles it is, I will go with that. Well, look at that. There is a massive split when you get onto the sort of western side of England and into Wales, even Ireland, where nobody seems to use that term, or very few people do, but on my half of the country where I grew up, slim soles uh, was all the rage. How do you refer to your mother in the nicest terms possible. I refer to her as, out of all of these, as mum. But you've got mummy, old dear, old lady, mommy, mammy, mom, more, mama, ma, ma'am, mum, or old one. I'll go with uh, mum. Uh, which of these words, if any, would you use for somebody that you think is stupid? I have to use this every day. I mean, at least, you know, when I'm out there on the train commuting to work. Pillock, Burke, love both of those words. Dummy, gal, moron, eejit, uh, thick, dope, idiot, wazuk. Definitely wazuk. Uh, twerp, uh, plank, melt. That's a new one. I've, I've seen that uh, arising on uh, British Twitter recently is the word melt or numpty. I do like the word numpty, but out of all of these, and, and I should say, I use about half of those on a routine basis, but wazuk 
is top of the list. It looks like it's more of a northern thing. Wow, I didn't know that. And there is, it looks like there is a bit of a dark pink area around where I grew up. So um, that's very telling, isn't it? Uh, which of these words, if any, would you use for someone who is moody? Okay, so this is interesting. Arsy, crabbit, mardy that I grew up with, stroppy, pissed off, crabby, sulky, grumpy, narky, miserable, or cranky. Some similar words in there. But for me, Mardi is definitely one of them. Do I use any of these others? Not really. He's right, Mardi, isn't he? Yeah, I, I say Mardi without question. That's still in my, my dialect. I used it just the other day. And look at that. Look at the map. It's very, very localized to sort of Lincolnshire, the East Midlands and the sort of Midlands in general, and maybe parts of Yorkshire. Um, but outside of there, they don't really use that word very often. Which of these words, if any, would you use for running water smaller than a river? Uh, so what have we got here? We've got uh, rivulet, shook, burn, beck, dike, ditch, brook, creek, trickle or stream. I think out of all of those, I'd simply say stream. I th I've used some of those other words over the years, but um, not to any sort of frequent degree. I think stream is the one um, I most associate this with. So I think that's going to be quite general. It is um, until you get into Scotland again, where they uh, buck the trend. As you pronounce them, do the words farm and palm rhyme? Yes, they do. Um, unlike here in the US or many parts of the US where, you know, the L in palm is pronounced. Um, we, I don't do that in England. Um, I'd be very interested. I bet I bet in Scotland there is a difference here just because of the sort of roticism of the word farm. But no, they don't for Scots and the Irish, of course, where roticism is also a big thing. And also parts of the Southwest where they will pronounce their R's in car and all that. 20, question 20. Which of these options, if any, would you use as a general word for the outer garment for the lower half of the body with individual leg parts reaching to the ankle? What does that mean? Oh, they just mean trousers, looking at this. So, right, so those are the options. Bottoms, breeches, trousers, slacks, kecks, trousers, Scottish, uh, trues, uh, strides, pants, breeks, jeans, or trackies. Uh, for me, it's, it's simply trousers. I've never really used these kind of other slang terms, although maybe occasionally uh, you might catch me saying kecks. Let's see, that's much of the United Kingdom, much less England. So, yes, how do you refer to your grandmother? Is it mangu? Never heard of that one. Nana, nanny, mam, gran, granny, gram, grandma, nan, or nane. I always said nana or nanny. I think nanny or nana. We, we went back and forth on those. I'm going to go with nanny. I think that was probably slightly the most common usage in our household. Okay, but it looks like that most people do not use that. Um, it is quite prevalent in Norfolk by the looks of it, but I didn't grow up there, did I? I was quite a bit north of that. Which of these words, if any, would you use for not showing up for school or work? Uh, the first one there, twag. Twagging, twagging off school. I had forgotten that even existed. Um, or you've got skiving off. There is skiving. Do you know, I grew up saying twag, but I have to admit that one sort of left my dialect. You don't have a cause to use it once you don't go to school. And it's been a long time. Skive feels more natural to me. The rest of these, I've heard of them. I mean, play hooky, that has some currency in the United States, I think, doesn't it? But the rest of these, I'm not so familiar with. So I'm going to go with skive off. Much of the UK says the same thing. What is your name for the playground game in which one child chases the rest and anyone who is touched becomes the pursuer? For me, that was always Tig or Tiggy, not Tag. You want to play Tig? You want to play Tiggy? No, it was Tig. It was definitely Tig. It's a game I've not played since then, so I, I now have to think, is that presently part of my dialect? I think it would be. Like, if somebody asked me, as this quiz is doing, what do you call this game? I think that my response would be Tig. Um, so that's much of the United Kingdom, uh, except for the South, apparently. How do you pronounce the words but and put the same way? Because I'm not from the South. So that's it. And it looks like, oh, wow. So when, when we're talking about Britain, so England, Scotland and Wales, it looks like just the north of England does what I do. That puts things in a massive perspective over that particular pronunciation. So the, the final question today, which of these words, if any, would you use for a piece of long cushion furniture in the main room of a house? Seti, there's a word uh, from my past and certainly still part of my present uh, if I'm having a conversation about those. Uh, lounge, seat, Chesterfield, a sofa, 
Uh, Div, Div, Divan? Divon, Divan, never heard of that one. It has to be one of either Seti or Sofa. And I've come to say Sofa. I don't think these days I would ever say Seti. That was influenced by living in America. I don't know that I use, I'm not saying that they don't use it in, in Britain. I'm sure they do, but I don't think it was ever part of my dialect to do that. So I'm gonna go with Sofa. And so let's click next and we will find out my results. Well now, look at that. That says a lot about both my dialect and the accuracy of this quiz. It has pinpointed me as being very close to the place that I grew up. So apparently moving to the United States hasn't altered my dialect all that much. Now that makes sense, I think, because we acquire a lot of the words we'll go on to use in life in our youth. And nothing can take away from me the fact that I grew up in that little corner of the world. Now let me know in the comments below if you took this quiz and where it pinpointed you. Particularly, I'd love to hear from Americans who took it to see if they got any kind of region assigned to them. And equally, if you grew up in the UK or Ireland, let me know if it was as accurate for you as it was for me. That's it for this episode. Thank you for joining me today. And of course, if you haven't had the chance, do subscribe so that my videos don't get lost in the pond. A big shout out to all of my patrons without whom none of this would be possible from the writing to the research to the infestation of wood lice. If you would like to become a patron in this channel, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Anybody that becomes a patron will get access to my secret live stream every Tuesday night and also those of you pledging five dollars or more a month will get that plus access to my secret podcast and more. Until next time have a wonderful day enjoy the rest of Vlogmas and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching this episode of Lost in the Pond. Don't forget to hit my stupid little face to subscribe and please share this video with the world. Hit me up on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook and if you would like to support this channel please do so at patreon.com slash lost in the pond.